Hello and welcome to the 23rd annual ARPA International Film Festival Q&A portion. Today, I am joined by writer and director Michael Aloyan, uh, director and writer uh, of the short film This Land, which will be streaming via Seed and Spark during our festival. So if you could just start off by introducing yourself, where you're from, and a little bit about your film. Uh, yeah, my name is Michael Aloyan. Uh, I'm uh, an army and filmmaker born and raised in LA. And um, I, uh, this is a story that I wanted to tell for, uh, for a really long time. It's inspired by uh, my dad's story when he came uh, to the States uh, and uh, um, kind of a loose interpretation of, of uh, the events that happened to him in the first few months uh, in this country. And uh, yeah, that's, that was the inspiration behind this film. And uh, it took a while. but uh, was... Yeah, no, so it's very close to you, I'm sure. Um, and you actually just touched on the second question, what your inspiration was for the film. Yeah, it's, uh, I, so my dad, when he came here, he didn't know any, he didn't know a word of English. And uh, the, the only word he could kind of find was um, putting on the zippers of these fake bags in one of these underground factories um, in LA in the early 90s. And he, he only worked there for a few months until he kind of was able to find it, you know, something else. But um, I always thought that was a fascinating story in this world that I hadn't really seen tapped into in, in movies. And uh, so I did a little bit of research and, and I found out that it's actually quite a, a huge industry and um, with a lot of moving parts. And, uh, and then uh, the story kind of just grew out of the, the two main characters. But well, that's awesome. And you're right. I've never seen anything quite like, quite like your film. So it's very unique. Um, Thank for you. Sure. Um, what was your biggest challenge while making this film? We definitely had a tight budget and tight schedule. We had to shoot the whole film in, uh, in four days. And we have um, 11 locations, I think the number was. So we had a lot of moving in uh, one day. We had four, four or five locations on one of our days. So we kind of just had this whole production going to move. And we were shooting in the heart of the fashion district in downtown LA, which is you know extremely crowded. And you have to deal with extras and getting people to not look into the camera and all of this. So it was just a, a very complicated shoot. But um, uh, we had a great production team led by our producer, Monica Yvonne, great DP, Andrew Rieger, and just kind of uh, was one of those, everyone coming together. Oh, awesome. Okay. And then um, I'm sure permits were probably a bit of a challenge as well uh, with all those locations or? No, permits were actually, uh, yeah, that's what I thought. Just like you, I thought it was going to be a, the biggest uh, headache and it turned out to actually be the easiest thing because uh, I just, I, not many people shoot there. I, I don't know why, what the reason is behind it, but it's just, we were able to get the permits actually surprisingly easily. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, um, it was a pleasant surprise that never happens. But yeah, <laughs> no, that, yeah, right? No, that's awesome. Um, what did you learn while making uh, this land? Um, I definitely learned to be flexible um, because I think it's kind of as when you're writing, especially if you're writing something that you're going to direct, I think it's easy to get caught up in this idea that you have a very specific vision and uh, the, the only right way is the way you saw it and that if you somehow s skew from that vision that you're either compromising or failing or you know that notion and I think on this one I learned to embrace the complete opposite and just kind of go with with where the actors were taking it we were working with um, incredible cast with Karin Garaguyan who I've been a fan of his work for many years he's in Tangerine Florida project and um, with someone like that, you kind of an actor like that, you let him improv and he just kind of takes it to all these new places. And mm -hmm. um, I just learned to embrace it and not try and fight it and, and find the better version of the movie than the one I, I came uh, on set to make. Oh, that's awesome. No, that's, that's really cool. And actually, just for a personal question, was there any particular thing, like you said, where you were flexible, like you saw it one way and then maybe there was a suggestion or something and something changed and it was changed for the better? Yeah, definitely. I, um, one specific example that uh, I think is great was uh, the whole, you know, the ending with the bag and all that. And the woman, we had this entire scene where um, the protagonist, Azad, goes into the store and um, he has interaction with the woman who works there and all of this. And um, I was very adamant that that scene was crucial and, you know, I had my reasons for why. And um, the lead actor, uh, because we had such a limited schedule, it wasn't like we could just shoot stuff and figure out later if we needed it. Uh -huh. So um, Car and the lead actor talked me out of it uh, and we used the time to shoot something else. And um, I, I definitely realized afterward that that scene was completely unnecessary and it just uh, fixed the pacing and a lot of problems uh, were kind of just corrected by removing that one piece, you know? That's and, uh, Yeah, just something like one of those things, initial reluctance and then you realize that it's just a better idea. Yeah. Oh, that's very cool. Awesome. Um, 
what do you think this land says about the world we live in? I think it says that um, immigrants are definitely still treated as a subgroup in our uh, society. And I think they're uh, being, I'm not an immigrant, but I'm, I'm, uh, I was born to immigrants and uh, I definitely grew up uh, with that being a huge part of my identity in my life. And uh, so um, I think that uh, we still have a long way to go in terms of uh, how we treat people in this country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I don't know, like we were kind of saying earlier, I haven't seen um, a film like this, you know, before. Kind of, and, and I think it's awesome that you're kind of bringing this to the light, you know, like something that maybe not is as mainstream, you know, uh, in films. But I re it's really awesome that you're bringing that forward and, and exposing that a little bit. Um, what universal themes are explored in your film? Uh, I think kind of the, uh, you know, the regular ones, it's definitely a story about uh, hoping for a better life, uh, kind of striving for that idea of paradise, whatever it is, we all have our own version of it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, a lot of people come here with the, hope, with the belief, the pitch that, you know, this is uh, where everything is possible. And uh, I definitely wanted to kind of look, uh, tell a film through the eyes of someone that has that hope, that has that kind of uh, blind faith in uh, the American dream, in mm -hmm. the, uh, the promises of capitalism, and uh, see him having to realize that maybe some of that was not exactly truthful. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Um, what, where can people learn more about your fantastic film? Um, it's, we're on Instagram at this underscore land underscore film. Uh, we've, uh, we just started doing the festival circuit because, uh, we finished post-production the time, um, quarantine kicked in. Uh, so we kind of had to put festivals on the black burner. ARP was one of the first ones we're screening at. Uh, so, uh, we're just starting to, to make the round with the festival before mm -hmm. it'll be available in streaming. So yeah, and Instagram is kind of, uh, the, the best, the best place to follow, uh, the updates on, on what's happening on the circuit. Awesome. Yeah, we're, we're honored to be one of the first ones. That's awesome. And, and everybody go check out the Instagram if you want to learn more about his film. Um, what films have been the most inspiring or influential to you and why? Um, this, in particular with this land, it was definitely very inspired by um, 70s cinema, particularly uh, Coppola and Scorsese and this um, grittiness and this rawness of, uh, of telling these stories of kind of characters that would usually be extras in most movies or at best small supporting characters, but they would take those people, those stories and put them front and center. And that was uh, kind of a big inspiration. You know, we looked at a lot of, we looked at um, the conversation we looked at Chinatown, we looked at um, Mean Streets, just a lot of these movies that kind of capture that uh, almost, not documentary, but it's a very grounded uh, look at uh, kind of this unexplored, um, piece you know of, of, of the larger scale of uh, mm -hmm. in this case los angeles okay awesome um was there a particular event or time uh, in your life that you recognized that filmmaking was more than just a hobby it was your life and living yeah i mean i started very early i started making movies when i was six seven years old with my dad's high eight camera and oh, wow. i made my first feature when i was 12 and i kind of uh, i always knew that this is what i wanted to do and it's kind of the only thing i've ever done you know so um I've, uh, I've worked mostly uh, writing professionally, writing for television, but um, I definitely, you know, directing is, is the, um, the goal. So. Oh, awesome. 12. That's, that's incredible. That's, that's really cool. Um, any upcoming films you can tell us about that you're, you're currently working on? Or I know COVID is a little bit restrictive. But. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, if, uh, if COVID and the movie Gods permit, I, I'm supposed <laughs> to be shooting my first feature uh, in England um, later this winter. But, you know, uh, we're just taking it day by day and, and uh, assessing the situation. So we'll, we'll see what uh, this fascinating year has in store. <laughs> this wonderful, wonderful year, yes. Yeah. All right. Well, I, well, well, we are excited to hopefully see that stuff uh, coming through the pipe soon. Um, but thank you so much for being in this Q&A with us today. We hope Thanks. to see you again soon. And thank you all, everybody, for watching. Um, go check out everybody else's Q&As as well. And uh, thank you so much, Michael, for your time. Thanks, Nick. Pleasure talking to you. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you.